Welcome back to Dream PSUs. Today, we are investigating Ryzen 7000 behavior with high speed RAM. Now, what we have here as a test system is gonna be the one I've just built on the channel with a Ryzen 9 7950X, so the top of the line CPU, with an ASRock X670E Pro RS, which is a pretty good motherboard, uh, even though it's not too expensive. And currently, we have some XPG DDR5 5200 MHz RAM, but what we have here today is something pretty special. From Team Group, we have their white RGB DDR5 6000 MHz RAM, CL38, so it's extremely high performance RAM, it's their Delta series. And we will see if this does make a difference, especially considering that we can tune the Infinity Fabric in Ryzen to improve the performance. And I will also recommend at the end some settings to couple with the Undervolt to get the really uh, top performance. So we're gonna be testing it with this mini monitor from Uperfect and this mini keyboard from Tikeria and Keymove. So let's go and get some baseline tests for you guys and then let's swap out the RAM. Okay, so this is how we are setting it now. As you can see, we have everything on auto. We are not using a curve optimizer. We just set the XMP uh, on 5200 and we are running our tests. Now, as a performance metric, I am using CPU-Z own inbuilt benchmark. Then I'm using Cinebench R23. And then I'm also doing some in-game testing in Call of Duty, Apex and Fortnite. So let's get started with CPU-Z. Okay, so we have 15,928 on the multi-thread and 761 on the single thread. I will, of course, do multiple runs to double check those results uh, so that we can actually count them without variance. And then we can move over to Cinebench. So after conducting a few off-camera runs, we can conclude that we are at around 16,000 megahertz on the multi-thread and at around 760 on the single thread. So let's move on to Cinebench. We will start with the Cinebench multi-core. Okay, so the 10 minutes run finished and we totaled 37,584 points, which is pretty good. So now we can move on, test a couple of games, and then we can actually swap the RAM. Okay, so we tested Apex. It wasn't the best performance, but I say it's finally time to slot these guys in the PC and see what changes. Time to open this T-Force Delta DDR5. Ooh, they do look very nice, I have to say. They give you a T-Force logo. And then we have our RAM. I think it will really fit the build, honestly. Out goes this one, and in goes this one. Nice. With the new RAM installed, we're finally in the BIOS and we are enabling the 603838, uh, here you can see all the timings preset. So we can now go ahead and test it. We are now back in Windows and with a better looking PC. As you can see, the DRAM frequency is 3000, that multiplied by two is exactly 6000, so it took it. So I say we can start all of our benchmarks. First run is a bit higher than a previous first run, but this really could be benchmark variance. That's why we're gonna do more than one run and then draw out the average. 
After a series of runs in CPUZ, we can conclude that the performance is within margin of error of the initial run, so, so far, no gain here. Let's test in Cinebench. Again, multi-threaded score. Okay, and here we are after the run, and as you can see, again, a slight increase, but very slight. Let's move on with the gaming results. So here we are with the conclusions. Now, let's recap a bit. In the synthetic measurements in CPU-Z, there was a slight increase, but it was pretty much marginal. Like I calculated the percentage increase on average, and it was around 1%, which could very well be uh, inside margin of error, even though, again, I have done multiple runs. In Cinebench, again, average performance increase was around 1.5 to 2%, so again, very little, uh, even there. So one could say that higher speed RAM is useless, but that's wrong because we tested in gaming. And now in games at high refresh rate, at 1080p, tested with a 4070 Ti with all the settings on the low, we were gaining on average an 8% margin, which is actually pretty good for the difference. I, it, it's honestly more than I was expecting. And we can attribute it, yes, partly to the speed, the 800 megahertz speed increase, but more importantly, also, to the two decrease in timing, because we went from CL40 to CL38. Now, this also opens up another chapter, and that is memory timing tuning. If you wanna spend the time to tune your timings in your DRAM, you will get an increase. You can go as far as getting a 10% increase just by tuning your timings in selected games. Again, what's very specific about RAM is that it's not like you're doing an overclock on the CPU where you're getting an increase in every scenario. You're just getting an increase in certain scenarios that actually do utilize the RAM bandwidth. So it's a thing I think you should do. I think you should get some higher speed RAM if you're getting a high-end system like this one especially with a Ryzen 9 7950X where you're spending so much for the CPU alone, maybe one could argue that if you're going for a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7, you can save a few bucks. That I can definitely agree with. It's not an essential part, but I think it's worth the money on the high end. But it's also true that in terms of tuning, again, aiming for a higher frequency might not be the right choice. You could probably be better off just by lowering the timings and more importantly, by doing an undervolt to your CPU with a curve optimizer or tuning the PBO or with a static offset. I actually do have a video uh, about that. And that is actually what I do recommend. Uh, it's quicker, it's much easier to test stability because if you tune the RAM manually, you will need to test stability for days and you will get performance increase in every scenario. But if you do want me to do a full in-depth guide for RAM tuning, do let me know, I can do it definitely. And regarding this thing, uh, I'm very happy for the upgrade in this computer, I think, uh, with the white build, this white Team Group T-Force Delta DDR5 RAM was definitely worth it, and I'm very happy I was able to test it out, thanks Team Group. And overall, I think it was a good choice to put it in this system here. So guys, this is it for today. If you wanna see more videos, check out the channel. Please drop a like and a sub. I have many spacing from builds, like again, the build in there, how to tune the build in there, mini monitor review, like this U-Perfect monitor. I also take a look at keyboards, like this one from uh, Kieria every now and then. So stay tuned, see you in the next one, guys. Bye.